that X be a set. A partition of X is a collection of subsets of X subject to two conditions. Every element of X is in one of the subsets. Two, no element of X is in more than one subset. You have your set X and you have your partition X sub A, X sub B, X sub C. And X sub A, X sub B, and X sub C completely cover the set with no overlap between them. Does that make sense? As an example, let's look at uh, uh, A, one, two, three, four, five. Can you give me a partition of A into two subsets? A B, which consists of one and two. And C, which consists of three, four, five. Every element of A is in one of these two. First of all, these are both subsets of A. Uh, second of all, every element is within one of these two sets. And third of all, no element is in. There's no overlap between the sets. Yeah. And we could have, I hate this O because it looks like zero, but we could have the odds be the odd numbers. Every number, every integer is either even or odd, and no integer is both. So this is a perfectly valid partition of the integers. What's another partition? We could do partition of Z into B, which would be prime numbers, and R, which would be not prime numbers. That would work really well, too. Uh, can we do it into more than two sets? Yes, you can do positive and negative integers. All right, and then also zero. Right. So we could do a partition of z into, I want to do m from minus. There's the strictly negative integers. I'm going to do b for zero. So be you could just put the singleton set zero here. And then we could do P, which would be the positive numbers, positive integers. And this is a partition into three sets. All of these would be perfectly valid partitions. I'm going to partition Z into four things. Well, first, I'm going to have R0 will be the set of things such that n is congruent to 0 on 4 and r1, which is the set of things such that n is congruent to 1 mod 4 or 2, which is the set of things, set of integers such that n is congruent to 2 mod 4. And have r3, which is a set of things such that n is congruent to 3 on 4. And this is a partition of the integers based on what the remainder is when you divide by 4. When you divide a number by 4, we well, have actually four different things that can happen, but you're going to get only one remainder. You're going to get two different remainders. And every number has a remainder when you divide by 4. There's nothing that says things can't be infinite. So consider the real numbers. I'm going to define a collection of subsets, uh, subscript. That subscript is going to tell me how to label that set. So for each integer n, I'm going to define the set big X sub n to be equal to the half open interval from n to n plus 1 where n is included and n plus 1 is not. What would x sub 0 be? It'd be the interval that includes 0, but does not include 1. What would x sub 3 be? From 3 to 4, including 3, but not including 4. What about x sub negative 5? Of negative 4? Is this a partition of the real numbers? So if you think about looking at your real numbers, from zero 
up to one, x sub zero is going to cover zero up to one, but it doesn't touch one. So one is going to cover one up to two, but it doesn't touch two. And so every number is covered by one of these x sub n. There are infinitely many different ones because you need infinitely many length of one intervals to cover this infinite line. <clears throat> but this is a partition of ones.